just about everything in the Lone Star State is bigger and louder. That sure extends to its politics. Texas has been a reliable powerhouse for the Republicans. Vast record-setting lines of early voters snaking for hours appear to be challenging that, just as the ability to vote is itself being challenged. How can you exclude people from being part of that process if you're a democracy? Moved the barriers for African-American men to vote. Annie Johnson Benefield teaches in Harris County and is witnessing voter suppression. When things happen like recently, one drop-off location in a county as large as Harris County, yes, we have a long way to go. Harris County is seven times the geographic size of Toronto and one of the biggest counties in the U.S. But there is just one ballot drop-off location for 2.4 million registered voters. Getting to that drop-off and back by public transit could take a full day. I have a long list of things that Texas does that are just absolutely insane when it comes to making voting harder. Anthony Gutierrez helps run the voting rights advocacy group Common Cause. Do you find that this is targeting specific demographics within society, or is it targeting a specific group? The pattern of voter suppression in Texas over at least the past decade is very clearly aimed at black and brown communities, poorer communities, um, people who probably tend to vote more progressively. You can change your address online. So as vice president of the League of Women Voters in Houston, it's Annie's mission to get as many people voting as possible. It's also personal for her. Annie's father fought in the Second World War. Didn't even have the right to vote, though, until he was 56, after the Voters' Rights Act was passed. Her mother, now 103, has cast her ballot ever since. A fundamental right, just as important today as it was then. It's not acceptable in 2020. You can't sit on the sideline. You can't, silence is not golden. You have to get into this fight to keep the democracy that we have. It may not be perfect with warts and all, but guess what? If you're not engaged in the process, you can't have an impact. Now consider this. In a state that's voted Republican in the last 10 presidential cycles, Democratic-leaning Harris County is shifting the dynamic. If everyone votes in the county, it could mean Texas swings more blue. A game changer in national politics, with the state holding the second most number of electoral college votes nationally. There are people who have seemed to have come to the conclusion that um, if they can't win elections, the next best course of action is to manipulate the elections to try to predetermine the outcome, to just make it too hard for the other, the other candidate to win. With long lines like these, Anthony sees how difficult it is to even make it here and wait often all day. If you are kind of like low income, you're working a couple of jobs and the people in power are limiting the like times of day when you're able to vote and like the types of um, identification that you can use to vote, requiring you to go to like an office to go get a new form of ID during only like these certain specific times. And you have to try to get off work for that and you have to go try to get off work again to go vote and you know you may go show up and realize like oh that line is like four hours long it can be hard they, they, there are legitimate like reasons why people often just can't vote even though they really do want to and that's it's not an accident unfortunately meanwhile annie wants her students to vote and offers extra credit if they do all part of her fight continuing into the next generation of voters as a democracy, you want everyone to participate. You want all voices heard. You want people to be engaged and participate in the political process, and you want them to be informed. Informed is one thing, voting another, a high stakes fight playing out during this election. David Common, CBC News, Toronto.